ladies and gentlemen, welcome back from the MLG Studios here in New York City. We're live watching some round of 16 action of WCS America currently. We're in the final match of the evening. The decider, a best of three to determine who's going to advance to the round of eight and who's going to drop down to Challenger League. Moonblade is currently up one to zero, looking fierce in game number one. Very fierce. I and mean, he's it's actually looked very fierce against Terran in general. Um, and that game, this is... His play is very convincing. I mean, one of the cool things about him is he's so poised against drop play. Uh, I've yet to see him well, send his entire army after a drop. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which is later really... Because like, it, it, it was interesting in the match against Apocalypse. Oh, the early, the early Widow Mines yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I, I agree with you 100%. As the game gets later, it's like... So many players will just caught off guard and just send their whole army to deal with one Marine. Or, or, or even if it's five Marines. Sure. I mean, I was so, exaggerating. Yeah, you were. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> so in this situation, there is there, there's three options to deal with those drop play in the mid game. When there's there's an army threatening you too, it's a situation, right? One is is what you can do is you can split your army perfectly all the time and have the right minions everywhere. Yep. And then that's if you're God. Um, <laughs> it's very rare that it happens AKA all the time. Innovation. Yes, uh, if one of them played Zerg, we might have that. Or, or actually, like watching Sulky's kind of like that. Um, but the other way, of course, is have your army always chase a drop, which means the main army just kills every bases and loses the game. Moonblade's option is okay. If the drop happens, pull the drones, deal with the biggest threat, and send a few units to deal with the drop. As long as they don't lose a hatchery, you know, um, it's all good to lose some mining time. Not that big a deal. All right, guys, here we are in the potential last game of the night and certainly the last match of the night. I have the pleasure of introducing the two remaining players in this group as the night extends further and deeper into darkness. The top right-hand location, we have the player who is in a situation where he must win two in a row. Your blue Terran player hailing from Korea. Representing Team Complexity, he is the STC. His opponent in the top left-hand location of Whirlwind. I present your Red Zerg player. Hailing from Australia, he has three wins in a row against formidable Terran players right now. One win away from advancing to the WCS America round of eight. He is Moonglade. The first Overlord. Scouting in the correct direction, similar to how we did. You know what? He did this for Apocalypse too. He scouted the, the correct direction. Do you think Moonglade knows something about Whirlwind? He's a ninja, man. He knows the secrets of the map. Of course, going Hatchery first, and SCC going Command Center first. So what I want to see is if he... Um, oh, he won't see the Command... Yeah, because he's not Drone Scout, so of course he won't really see the exact build until it's too late to decide whether he wants to go uh, third hatch before pool or not, which is a, a build... Some Zergs do against uh, the Command Center first to go ahead and get that extra hatchery a little bit faster. But uh, we'll just see a, a fairly standard opening. I, I'm i curious to how Moonglade's going to progress in this game. One thing you might notice from the last game mm -hmm. is, you know, the STC, he wasn't scouting super aggressively with the Reapers. And he was playing, a, I mean, it, it wasn't like a super risky build, but it was a standard greedy three Command Center play. And... Sometimes if a Terran does that build, the, the three command center fast upgrades, they can be caught off guard by uh, some mass roach attacks. Let's see if Moonglade does a sneaky thing. Yeah. He does. He does. You, you know, uh, uh, so here, here's the trick. People are like, wait, doesn't make any sense. Overlords and command centers have the same vision. How come he can see the command center and command center can't see him? The reason why is because the vision extends from the center of the unit. So the, they both have the same vision range going out of the center. So the command center can't see the overlord until the overlord sees the center of the command center. But of course, as soon as it sees the edge, the whole thing's revealed. Um, a cool little feature of, yep. of the way vision works in Applies to all matchups. Of course, uh, yes. just got a nexus or something. Be sure to pull that overlord away as soon as possible. For StarCraft II, a game about information. You want to make sure you can retain as much information about your opponent while hiding as much as you can from him. And, it, you know, it should be interesting. I wonder if SDC is going to try to go for a strategy revolving around getting some damage done a little bit earlier. Because we saw in game one, it went to the late game. It went to where presumably SD wanted it to go. But once he got there, it didn't necessarily go how he wanted it to go. You know, Moonglade able to show that uh, he is pretty fierce as the game goes along. So we'll definitely keep an eye on that. 
We'll have to see if he goes for a more aggressive two base type build. Also, uh, it looks like Moonglade is going to take a, a faster base here. Uh, still no extractors going down yet, so getting to four queens, getting a few more drones. Either that or he's going to build all four extractors at once, which is something you sometimes see, but uh, especially against Command Center first, and, and Moonglade really loves that three hatch style. Uh, why not get the hatch a little bit faster? Especially when you know, it's it's sometimes it can be very hard to get that third base up and keep it up. You know, the faster you get it up, the faster you can potentially get static D there. Um, Queen creep spread. Exactly, and, uh, exactly. So, I would I would tend to agree with you, Mister Jackson. Third command center being built by the STC is about to start that Hellene production as well, and, and the Hellenes are going to be his first attempt at, at scouting Moonglade and, and trying to figure out what he's up to. Moonglade building four gases. There's a skin. And the scan, of course, sees the gas timing at the main. Sees the fact the spawning pool is not wiggling, um, which which should tell him there's no, you know, uh, speed on the way. Which means that the the extractors at the natural probably weren't taken super super fast or anything weird uh, like that. Over and scout. Did you see the third oh, That's a good question. Did, does Mugli know about that third orbital? Oh, yes. he does. He sees the very edge of it. And man, Mugli's overlords are are really doing work for him. Yes. Two engineering bays being added on, it would have been nice to, to see that too, but of course SDC waiting for that Overlord to leave. What he could have done is like thrown down Starport or something. Or, uh, I don't know. Throw down Starport, two more. Fourth yeah. Just something crazy. Or uh, three it. more barracks and gone for one of those like Hellion combat shield marine timings or yeah. something. Uh, and those are actually, if the Zerg doesn't scout those, they can be dangerous. So, like 10 Hellions and, and 15 combat shield marines show up to your base and, and uh, that's it's hard. Like, what do you rally? If you don't have a Roachworm built, I mean, uh, it, it can be tough. Speaking of which, there's a Roach one. There it is. And, and is he's he, moving like, oh, there's plus one missile. Yeah, you, you, you can tell, because he tech lair before the Evo Chambers, yes. it's much more likely to be a type of speed Roach timing, because uh, the timing of all these buildings is queued up so that, assuming he starts Roach speed the instant he can, it, it's going to finish at almost exactly oh. the same time. Oh, he doesn't want to let those Hellions in. Okay, they get by, but they're not oh. going into the main. I mean, which, which is which actually is where the Roach yeah. is. And the thing is, is he didn't see the, when the Evos were started, I don't think, right? He just saw them finished. Yes. And he saw they, they were animated. But he can't tell that they were just animated recently or that those upgrades are halfway done like, like they would have been if they were built before the, the lair. So I think he might be suspicious because he had two Widowmites scuttling across the map off to do whatever they wanted to do, but he just now retreated them back to his main base. Yeah, you know, it could be the third timing. Um, the, the fact that the third is after lair. Not a Marauder, too. He's, he's getting a second Marauder. Yeah, I think he's figured it out based on, uh, unless he... he a bunker? Another bunker. It, it was, is he, all he knows is he knows the third timing. That's the only information he has, but that's enough because the third was late enough that it was clearly after the uh, the lair. And, and that tells him, okay, it's probably to speed. He's, he's studying Mooglet, and he knows the builds. And uh, every other game, it's been a third before lair. Yes. When he's played the standard style. So now he sees the, the, the third later. He's like, something weird is going on. Oh, he sees all the roaches with the scan. Are you kidding me? <laughs> wow. That's the perfect scan. You know, this is a situation where um, if Moonglade had about eight more drones, he'd be perfect. Because SCC could actually be easily... Oh, the, the, the Zergling sees all the defenses. So what Moonglade's going to do, he's not going to attack up that ramp. He's just going to... He just made more roaches. Uh, yeah, I, I think... There's the drones, okay. Yeah, he's, he's going to get a squad of roaches and, yeah, build a hydrogen now. His goal is to slow down the third of STC. Obviously not, I mean, it's already done, but slow down from moving out to the third base. And STC may be, may be over defending two more bunkers. He is really paranoid. He's seen the, the terror of roaches from Moonglade and how effective they've been in this tournament for him so far. And Moonglade uh, should be putting speedings at both the possible turns. Oh, he scans, he sees the roaches. This is almost going to make him more paranoid, but Moonglade has no intentions of going up that ramp. There's, no. oh. he, he's, he's not going to, he's going to back away. What? Good. He's going to back away. He's going he, to He's going to back away. He's, he, he's trying to pick off the, the depots and stay out of range of those marauders. It's kind of a dangerous game. I don't know how worth it it is. It's interesting. It's not cost efficient. He should be checking that, that middle right base. He should be. He should have had a speed in there. That's that's actually a sloppy play by by Moonquid. Just send one unit there. Like I mean, he sent one to the one at the. <laughs> yeah, he does. I mean, he's yeah. He sent one speed in there. He should have sent one to the other the other base as well. Um, but I think what he was trying to do, he was trying to sell the build even more that it was an attack, and and he he, he didn't trade efficiently there, only killing a few uh, depots. Oh, it's a charge of the drones. What are these drones doing? <gasps> he's gonna. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's not a charge of the drones. That'd have been crazy. It's a misrally. So. 
He's backing up, getting hydras, getting 2-2. Two, two. He just checked on that, that base, the middle right. He's not sending his roaches there. I don't know if he can send the roaches there yeah, anymore. He, he can send so. a couple. He can't send all because then... He, oh, no, this is... Okay. He can't send all because then they, they died at uh, stem marauders and, and marines. But he can send a few, and if there's no defenses there, he can pick off um, STVs, of course. So it looks like there's a pause here, maybe a little bit of a, a tech at you. But the one thing that uh, we're going to see here yeah. is... Moonglades 2-2 is substantially have STCs, even though STC was fast with 1-1. And the reason why is because STC was so freaked out about the attack, he massively delayed his armory. He, he lost oh, uh, about a minute and a half of, of upgrade timing. Uh, and that's really not yeah, a, not a good... Yeah, 2-2 for Moonglades yeah. way ahead. So Moonglades going to be looking at you. This is a timing... Oh, I was talking... Was it Theognis I was talking to? I forget who. It was it was one of the very good Terran players. Uh, maybe it was, it was Illusion. And they're saying there's this build on the Kree ladder where... It's this 2 2 Roach Hydra timing that hits. It's it's like a late enough build. You can't just lift a third and give it up. You're going to be too far behind. It's right. a point in the game where you really want to have that economy. And it's very hard to defend if you don't have Seed Shanks, if you just have Bio Mine. They have Overseers and Hydra lists, uh, to help mitigate the Widow Mines. And yes, Marines for 50 Minerals are much more cost efficient than Roach Hydra. But because of the way production works, um, even if you look at the, like, the structures in, in, in this game, it's it's only five barracks right now, right? Um, and yes, once he gets a third, he'll add four or five more. As many barracks as bunkers? Yes. Um, almost exactly, actually. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, but so the idea is, you know, Tyrion has a lot of economy, but they can't use that economy um, for a couple minutes to get that production. If Zerg getting hit before that infrastructure kicks in, right. um, with Larva, they can make a lot of units very fast, and it's, it's almost like a max attack. Uh, and th the way this game is played out so, for so far, it's in a perfect situation for Moonglade to execute this attack. He still has to be careful with the positioning, though. Roach Hydra is so concave-based. Whirlwind has these maps. It looks like we're actually back in the game. Um, but it it's going to be really interesting to see how he plays this out. <laughs> these three Roaches are going to be unhappy. Observer getting back into the game, too. By the way, shout out, <coughs> shout out to our Observer, Giant Smurf, on the Reddits. Uh -oh. Watch Looks it. like uh, oh, they made the GIF. <laughs> it happened. Nice. It happened. It happened. So. Um, so it looks like there's another little, little issue here. Uh, the three roaches checked uh, on, on the expansion, of course. STC has has some units. He's going to defend it just fine. Um, but so I, I you're saying the next step for Moonglade is make a whole bunch of hydrolis and roaches and uh, attack. Yeah, and he's he's actually going to be looking to start moving out in probably about. 15 seconds. Ideally, when 2-2 two, two finishes, you want to be you want to be hitting. Yes. Um. He. I. I don't know if he's gonna, he's he's going to start researching roach speed or excuse me hydra speed. I meant to say. Right. Um, I'm not sure if he's going to wait for that to complete. Um. It, it'll help because a, a lot of it's as you rally in and it'll make it rally faster. You have to be careful though. One of the hardest parts about executing this type of attack mm -hmm. is balancing roaches and hydra. If you go too heavy roach, you can be kited around, drawn into widow mines, and and, and picked apart. If you go too heavy hydra. You're just gonna lose because hydras actually aren't really good against any Terran units on their own. Like SCVs. Yes, they're good against. And actually, Marauders they can almost break even against pure Marauder. <laughs> um, but really, they're there for the damage. They have to stay behind the Roaches, um, and, and they're there for the range. So Terran can't kite around and, and, and abuse their mobility. Oh, it looks like we're their players are ready. Get right Is back in this game ready? again. Right. There he is. So. Couple of roaches give your life. Oh, never mind. Just kidding. Musical chairs. Musical pauses. Um. Well, you know that's his last pause. So now someone else has to pause for him. We, uh, we might have to uh, change species here, but we have the ability to uh, yes. resume for replay. That is a possibility. If we need to. Hopefully we don't. And okay, so he is starting. He's starting hydro speed immediately after hydro range finished. It's kind of neat to know. In between those pauses, he actually, <laughs> that's like the one thing he did, right? No one had time to do anything because it was like two seconds. But Moonglade wants it this time so bad he's like was hovering over that yeah. <laughs> hydro speed key. Um, hit that perfectly. So that's just this started. is like if we're examining this particular moment in time, this is like really important. The um, upgrade differential is huge, actually. The fact yeah. that he'll be hitting and there's only one one from Terran. So uh, he's 136 out of 142 right now in supply, but he still has a lot of resources that he has yet to use. I I think he ideally Another three overlords and then he goes for it with a bunch of hydras kind of a thing. Or yeah, does he wait for that long? Ideally, he'd have overlords already in construction yeah. right now. I, I think this is something that's, that's one of the things you might. It's a slight. Maybe all these pauses also might have thrown him off. To be honest, it always messes people up with their builds. Um, but yeah, ideally you you'd have up to like 170 um, in your supply, so you can really build that. A mass wave of units uh, going forward. 
But I, I think it, it, it should be okay. Um, this is actually something we saw. He had this problem against Crank on Game 3 versus Crank. Mm -hmm. He had the game pretty much won, but he wasn't able to use his money. He was supply blocked for a very long time. Right. Uh, and that allowed Crank to get that third base up. If if, if Moonglade was better building overwards in that third game, Crank never got third base up. would have been totally over. Um, because it was actually 100 to supply to 50 after the, the failed two base DT attack. Yes. And then it was a situation where it was 100 food to 50, then it was 150 to like 110. And it really could have been 200 to 110, and he could have overwhelmed Crank. Um, but unfortunately, he was stuck there for a bit, and Crank was able to defend and, and turtle yeah, to the late even, game. Even pros get supply blocked. Um, now, let's say uh, STC is able to identify this move. It's something you can kind of expect a little bit, considering he's seen how many Roaches have been involved in the early stages of this game. He saw the double evolution chamber. Uh, how does he go about properly preparing for such an attack? I mean, this is tough. I'm, I'm sure he's experienced with this. Anyone who plays on a Korean ladder at a high level is, is definitely experienced this timing attack before. And the hard part about it is, ideally, if you can scout it out fast enough, uh, you can just add Siege Shanks, and it's pretty easy to defend. Siege Shanks obliterate this time, and if you have a decent number of them. Um, but we only have one factory that's on a reactor. Yeah, there's no way. Even if he tries now, he won't. He'd be like one seed check out in time, and he'd be sacrificing four wooden mines of production, and, and that's not worth it. So he wants to keep all his production up. Uh, but the most important thing is is set up uh, really good concaves. Whirlwind's a map. This time attack. I'm not actually sure this is a perfect map for it because not only is the map long to cross, so it weakens attacks. It it's takes not like longer. there's an open third, like yeah. a star station. St where star station's attack is freaking <laughs> scary, man. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, it's it's he has to watch that ramp to the back of the third, um, which, you know, if he adds two bunkers in the third, that can help, but also one of them gets run by later. Uh, and then in the front, he has to find a way to defend the front too, which is a little trickier because the, the front's more open. Um, but he has to kind of pick where he wants to defend and, and place very deliberately place bunkers and window mines at the correct locations. Uh, but it, it's tricky because he's down in upgrades. Really, ideally, the Terran wants to be even in upgrades. Yeah, that's great. And again, that comes down to that Roach attack, of course. SDC prepared as well as he could have. Yeah, you, you think he definitely overdefended yeah. a little bit, yeah. Um, I mean, not by that much, but, right. but literally all it took was just saying, okay, I need um, one less bunker and I can get that armory. Yeah. Or two less bunkers. And he, he could have defended fine with just three bunkers. He didn't really need five. And it, it's hard, though, to know exactly how much Zerg is committing. Um, that's maybe the Hellings need to... Yeah, yeah. The Hellings need to come in behind the Roaches as they move out to check the rally. And you could add more bunkers as the Zerg commits more and rallying in speedings. Roaches alone are... are it's, 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 you only need this type of defense if it's Roaches with, like, 20 Banians coming behind it. Yeah, if it. it's, like, a completely committed all-in where the Zerg is using all of his resources yeah. to try to break you. If it's just Roaches, you know, three bunkers full of Marauders with Widow Mines and more Marauders behind the bunkers is more than enough. Um, and the only way to scout that out is, is either to burn a ton of scans, which you're going to slow yourself more than adding bunkers, or to de the put the Hellings behind the Roaches as the Roaches move out and, and see what's being rallied behind them. And it's, you know, potentially a really difficult decision to make, especially in such an important match as this. Again, you know, SCC, if he loses this game, he's going to be in the Challenger League. He's going to be out of the WPS America Premier League. And again, when you're, when, you're, when you're scanning and you see 10 roaches pop out of the hatchery, you know, and being able to make that call between four and six bunkers, that can be, that can be pretty devastating. Now, this game isn't over by any means, guys. No. Um, um, it's, the map is very difficult to, to yeah. bust on. Yeah, yeah. So it's anything can still definitely happen, but I think the players are. Uh, I think we're figuring out the PC issues for the SDC. And this is, I mean, he already lost the, the first map. Yeah. If he loses this, he's done for. And you know, with, with the words he and Crank had beforehand, I guarantee you, Crank's gonna make fun of him. <laughs> it's funny because they're actually you're actually good friends. Yeah. But it's one of those things you're like, uh, when you have two friends competing, you always like poke fun at them, and like, so Crank will definitely poke fun at STC if STC loses this match. Um, uh, a lot of his, a lot of his friends will. I know a lot of people are watching Australia. Oh, no, oh, are we back? I'm. I've... SCC hit resume, but I, I, is Moonglade ready? All I saw was an unpaused with no text. Um, yeah, I, I repaused the game. Cause yeah, because I, I, no one was moving. I don't think Moonglade was. I, I think, think SCC might just be came restarting. back. Uh, uh, you were observant, so we can't talk to them. When we need oh, an I, so I'm like asking questions and they're not seeing it. Yeah, yeah, you're you're under observer chat, so they can't. But yeah, I, I didn't see any chat in the game. I just saw it got on pause by CC. I'm like, yeah. we'll get an official yeah. word on that. That's a, that's um, a terrible way for <laughs> when, was, when the sneaky moves are like. It's like Sasquatch is going over there hitting an unpause. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Well, so we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how this works out. And so I have a question. Let's yes. say the game was unpaused right now, and then we had... Um, oh, I'm getting words in my ear. Sorry. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. Official rule. Yes. We're going to restart from replay at, at uh, 15 seconds before this point right now. It's because of this pauses and the players were messed up in your builds a bit. Um, so we'll take a, a short commercial break and be right back with the game uh, resumed from replay. Thank you. 